Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This freaking blew my mind. Denver came out in Game 3 and absolutely lit a fire. Denver played some of the bas best basketball I've seen, frankly, since they've been in the playoffs. They played absolutely fantastic, getting great shots, playing great defense. We're going to discuss some of the concepts that changed from Game 2 to Game 3 that allowed them to be so successful in Game 3 by winning by 30 points. We're going to discuss in particular what Denver did on offense and what Denver did on offense that caused the Timberwolves so much issues. Let's go. All right, let's start with Denver on offense. And the first thing is we talked about how the Timberwolves love this little pack line defense, how they're playing aggressively. They're helping off, making sure Jokic, making sure Murray, making sure anyone doesn't get shots at the rim. And so one of the good ways to can counter this is to essentially get the ball moving from side to side because they're going to rotate, they're going to overhelp. So moving it from side to side allows essentially with more mobility, force the defense to adjust one way and you punish them on the other side. So I like this little ball screen they ran with Jamal Murray coming around aggressively, essentially from left, from right to left and getting Jokic the ball in the middle because this gives them space to work and it gives them so many options around the court when Ant is a little bit behind the play. And so Jokic has just so many options you can go to in this situation. And so while frankly, I would have liked Porter to shoot this ball. This creates just more opportunities, period, puts the defense in rotation and essentially makes it so Jokic is more likely to get rebounds. Aaron Gordon is more likely to get rebounds because the Timberwolves are off their original matchups, which leads to just more good results for the Nuggets in the long run. And then as this ball gets kicked out, they're still in rotation. They're still off their normal assignment. And so it still leads to good opportunities. Not only this, this is one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of the mid-range, but because the Timberwolves are clogging the paint so much, when you have good shooters like KCP, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., it makes some sense to lean towards a mid-range shot instead of forcing the ball at the rim, which is what they did in game two. And then another aspect to getting the ball side to side is if you give Jokic room to work in the middle with players moving around him, it forces the defense to adjust. And again, getting Jokic the ball where Ant is out of the play right here, essentially allowing him to work five on four is a recipe for success. And so we didn't see very many Aaron Gordon dunks in game two and that's because rudy gobert and cat didn't have to adjust in rotation but this ball screen coming from right to left allows for that because gobert's got to go with Jokic now which means nobody is with aaron gordon and great pass by Jokic. and then the second really important concept that i think denver i talked about this in the second video i think denver has to do this is when you get open looks if your name is michael porter jr kcp or jamal murray you shoot the freaking ball don't hesitate because they're going to be a little bit late in rotation because they help aggressively over. If you get an open look, you are shooting no matter what. Michael Porter Jr. catches, boom, release. I love it. They are too good of shooters to be questioning themselves on these kinds of shots. If you get slow rotation and isn't sure which one to go, you rise up and you fire. And so what these two concepts do is they force the defense to rotate. And then essentially what you're doing is you're punishing rotation. Okay, so here we're talking about Jokic getting the ball in the middle. He moves to the side. Okay, get the ball moving side to side, allow that to create opportunities, okay? And then once the ball gets kicked out, you don't just stand, you move around, you cut. Jokic comes out to the perimeter, okay? And his three-point th shooting threat draws out defenders, and he gets a little bit lackadaisical. Michael Porter Jr. cuts the rim, and a great pass, even though <laughs> Michael <laughs> blows the layup. Still a great pass. And then we'll see if this quick trigger stayed all the way to the fourth quarter. Okay, so here, because Michael Porter Jr. has been having the quick release, how does the defense react? They're worried about him now shooting. Hey, that's the thing is the threat of the three creates more action than the three actually does. Okay, so because they have to worry about it, you get Jokic working one-on-one -on -one with three is late in rotation, pretty on par with what Jokic does. Nice little spin move and wide open and then shoot the off balance floater. And then <laughs> it looks like it's going to be way off. And he's just like, okay, I'll just go grab it. No worries. All right, and then Jokic has the ball. And we see great spacing from Denver going to create just back down create just a little bit of separation and that's why i don't want jamal murray cutting here as they did in game two i want jamal murray being a shooter michael porter jr being a shooter and cut with somebody else if you want but boom he gets a little bit of separation he moves away from where the defender thinks he was and he rises up do not question shoot the freaking ball if you're open you're too good of shooters to be questioning yourselves shoot the ball even if you miss it sometimes shoot the ball and then we get to what denver did on 
on defense. And I think this is even more crucial because Minnesota struggled to score all game. And this is something I said from the beginning I think Denver should do, is especially McDaniels, I think you just leave them. But you got to force Minnesota to be passers. you got to force them to be passers and shooters from long range and not let them get things at the rim. We can see if we're watching McDaniels here, Michael Porter Jr. doesn't even attempt to close out. I mean, Gobert holds him a little bit, but it doesn't even matter because he doesn't want to close out anyway. Very next possession. The thing is, the Timberwolves thrive on driving, and they thrive on open space when you drive, and you just got to force them to pass the ball somewhere, and they make mistakes. I'm telling you, Anthony Edwards just does not pass the ball, does not see the floor super well. He might be the best one-on-one -on -one player in America, but if you can't make good reads and good passes, then Denver can exploit that. Okay, so as this action is occurring, we're watching how Denver plays defense. Nice little simple switch there. I like it because you know you have help coming, so Jamal Murray's not on an island. Okay, Gordon goes, KCP, he's guarding Anthony Edwards, or was guarding Anthony Edwards. This cutter was open, what does he do? He just follows him, man. Okay, they're like, okay, we're going to prioritize not giving up anything at the rim. Let them shoot from the outside. Even if we make a couple mistakes, let them shoot from the outside. All right, as this action is occurring, we got Gobert with the ball. Jokic, I would honestly prefer sagging off a little bit, but that's fine if they don't. Okay, so Porter goes over this ball screen. Gobert is the threat right now. He's coming downhill. What is Jamal Murray doing? Ignoring his player. Hey, good shooter. Doesn't even matter. Hey, you are helping over. Force them to make a pass. I'm telling you, too often Timberwolves, they just make one away passes. They don't really have great philosophy, essentially, with cutting to create open shots. And they don't have great passes on the team to capitalize either. Force them to make difficult passes, difficult drives, difficult reads. Not easy layups at the rim. And then finally, a good barometer for whether you're going to win or lose a game is that Anthony Edwards gets four-plus dunks or layups at the rim. If he doesn't do that, Denver's going to win a lot of games. If he does do that, Denver's going to lose a lot of games. First off, we see Aaron Gordon helping over. Right? As this drive comes downhill, Jokic is making him give up the ball. Hey, Aaron Gordon gets his arm in there, gets him maybe a little off balance. Jokic swiping down at the ball. Make Anthony Edwards pass the ball. If this ball is a foot higher, this is a go-bear dunk. Okay. It just is, but he's off balance. He's not the most technical passer. He's just not. And if Jokic is able to get essentially just a hand on this and disrupt it. And then finally, did we see these same concepts at the end of the game as well? Hey, we see drive happens here. KCP, what is he doing? Boom. Instant help. Make him pass the ball. Hey, we got three Denver defenders in here. Mike Conley, probably their best passer, frankly. And he still struggles to get the ball in. I'm telling you, these passes are not easy to make. You got long arms in the way. You got people coming downhill. You're moving quickly. It is hard to make those kinds of passes. And then did they guard Anthony Edwards the same way? Okay, so again, Timberwolves, they go to Anthony Edwards and this matters. First off, Gobert was a little open right there and they helped off. But again, that's tough passes to make. Okay, so close out late. Anthony Edwards, if you're not going to trigger that ball, you want him to get downhill and you're sending help. You know the help's coming behind you so you can close out aggressively. They force him to make either difficult shots or make those one-way passes. I'm telling you, he does not punish you on the rotation, so make him make those one-way passes. Okay, so then the ball gets reset. Again, you're daring them to shoot the one-way passes, make difficult passes as he goes to drive right here. Hey, you got hands in the middle. You know you got help coming. Force him to make difficult decisions. Leads to good results for Denver. And then the last one, a little bit in transition, Edwards looks to post up right here, and it's simple solution, man. He does not see the floor super well. You can be aggressive with the help. Hey, Jokic is over. Gobert is probably open for a dunk if you lob it up right here. Porter Jr. is shooting down, and what does what does Ant do? Throws the ball at his feet. Gobert is never going to catch this ball. Never going to catch this ball. If you bounce past in this situation, that is so dicey. Jokic already has a hand down anyway. The only place you can go is over the top with it. Hey, if you go down, it's likely to get stolen, swept, or you throw it out of bounds. So in conclusion, this game is so promising for Denver. The fact that they were able to get great looks on offense, they got Minnesota's defense moving side to side and were able to generate good looks because they were in rotation. And then on defense, they were able to limit Anthony Edwards, limit the shooters by forcing them to make difficult passes while they're moving fast and downhill with multiple players. This Denver is very difficult to beat. I am so curious how game four goes, given that game two went all Timberwolves and game three went all Denver. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a blessed rest of your day.